Hello everyone, so today we're going to change it up just a little bit. Uh, today I'm going to be playing, er, and showcasing a mod for Civilization IV, Beyond the Sword. Now this mod is uh, Rise and Fall of Civilization. And uh, this mod is quite nice because, you know, you, you have two start dates. You can start in uh, 3000 BC or in 600 AD. And of course, that changes the uh, factions you can start out as, right? I think in 600 AD, pretty much most of the civilizations are around. Uh, whereas in the uh, 3000 BC scenario, you just have essentially ancient civilizations to pick from. And what I like about this mod for Civilization IV is that the start dates change. So you have more... Um, historical progression, right? So you have the Egyptians, uh, India, China, and the Babylonians starting in 3000 BC, so before everyone else. And then you have the Greeks starting in 1600, the Persians in 850, Carthaginians in 800, the Romans in 750, the Japanese in 650, the Ethiopians in 290, and the Mayans in 50 BC. And these are the civilizations you can start out as, right? Because they have start dates that are that come fairly quickly in the grand scheme of the campaign. But there are, of course, a whole bunch of other civilizations that appear later. You just can't start out as them from the beginning, right? So if I choose the Babylonians, the campaign will start out uh, immediately. And then, um, let's, in 1600 BC, the Greeks will appear, and I'll actually be able to switch to the Greeks if I want. Uh, one of the other things I really like about uh, Rise and Fall of Civilization is the fact that it's not just the standard civilization victory goals, you know, either religious victory or domination victory, points victory. You also have historical victory. So this kind of reminds me of the um, medieval one total war sort of gl uh, glorious victory type uh, conditions so it wasn't just conquer the map right you you were able to accomplish historical goals uh where you enrich your civilization and go through history you know triumph in historical ways so for example uh the egyptians here under ramses uh, one of their goals is to have more than 500 culture in 700 bc so by turn 86 build the pyramids, the Great Library, and the Great Lighthouse by 250 AD, have more than 5,000 culture in 450 AD. Right, so that's really nice. But if you look at the other civilizations, you can see there are unique historical victories for each of them. So found Buddhism and Hinduism for India, found at least five religions, have the world's highest population in 1200 AD. Okay, and of course you get very different types of these victories as well. So for, for Babylon, Babylon is a little, I would say, easier. So be the first to discover writing, code of laws, and monarchy, make Babylon the most culturally advanced by 700 BC, and make Babylon the most populous city in the world in 700 BC. So let's actually uh, start a game as the Babylonians, and uh, I because they... Um, start the game in 3000 BC at the start date, and then I'll show you how this mechanic of civilizations emerging in different time periods actually works. Okay, so as you, as you can see at the start here, the game auto plays turns until your chosen civilization uh, has a chance to start the game. And of course, since uh, the Babylonians start in 3000 BC, uh, I don't have to wait at all. Okay, so as Babylon, and as I believe the other ancient civilizations that start in 3000 BC, um, you only start out with a warrior and a settler, whereas civilizations that start later uh, get much more than that. So they can have several archers, horse archers, or stacks, right? I believe the Mongols get a huge army, if I'm not mistaken. All right, so... Should I go with warrior, worker? I suppose I'll go with uh, warrior. 
uh, because I don't actually have all the tech I want in order to uh, be able to um, uh, exploit all these resources right by me. So let's go for mining. Because I'm not uh, building a worker yet, I'm going to go for mining, and then I'll go for masonry, which will allow me to construct quarries over the uh, marble and uh, the stone. So another thing about uh, Rise and Fall of Civilization is that uh, there are several independent states. So actually, these states are neutral with me right now. So they're not like the uh, regular at war with everyone barbarians that you start out uh, fighting against in standard Civilization IV. Uh, you can actually, you know, you have to actually declare war on them. So we have recruited our first warrior, and I think perhaps now I might want to go for one more warrior and then a worker. So we're exploring the Near East here. I'm going to perhaps garrison the city. That's probably the best thing we could do for now. And let's go for masonry, because, of course, that will allow us to um, exploit the resources right by us. So my plan here is to go for a worker. And then I'll go for perhaps a settler. Let's let's see. I haven't um, I have played a little bit of Rise and Fall to uh, prepare for this video, but I have not played in uh, Civ 4 a lot in a while of course. So, um, yeah, let's go for a worker here. So if my strategy is not the best, please don't uh, take it out on me. Oh, the villagers have provided me with a map. Uh, so, yeah, there's Greece here and southern Italy. So now we have a couple of warriors here. I'm going to, th I think I'm going to bring my warrior back. And I think I'm ready to found a couple of settlements here. Perhaps I can uh, create a settlement up in northern Iran here. Or perhaps I can create a couple of settlements up in northern Mesopotamia and in uh, Asia Minor. But uh, let's see, let's see. I'll send uh, this warrior down here as a sort of scout. I thought this video would be a nice throwback because, of course, Civilization IV was the game that kind of got me into the mod scene in general because I, you know, didn't even think about modding games before Civ IV. And Civ IV was, of course, a legendary game in terms of modability. Even I made some mods for it. Okay, so if we go for hunting, then I can make a scout and spearman. That might be good, but I think... It might be best to go for either mysticism or animal husbandry. So I'm going to go for animal husbandry because that'll let us go for writing. Um, I guess one thing that's a little weird here is that we're starting as the Mesopotamians, but we don't have writing, even though, of course, writing was invented prior to 3000 BC in Mesopotamia. So that's um, interesting. All right, I think... I'll move this warrior here into northern Iran just to see what kind of land is there in terms of uh, what we can settle. And, you know, in terms of Civ 4's graphics, I always thought they were really nice. I think they hold up fairly well, especially in a lot of the um, major mods like Total Realism, which is a mod I definitely want to cover uh, because there are a lot of really fantastic mods for Civ 4 that are still in development to this day that I think might be the best civilization experiences of all time. Really nice indeed. So let's go for a settler. We've got a worker here, so let's go for... Let's upgrade the stone. Let's construct the quarry. So we're exploring the Arabian Peninsula here. So it seems like... Maybe this sort of Hittite region is going to be the best for another settlement. 
Okay, so uh, Judaism has been founded in Jerusalem here. And everything else is going uh, pretty much as expected. Uh, we found Egypt there. There shall be peace in our time. Farewell. Okay, I think I'm going to get this uh, warrior to go back to Asia Minor here. So we can uh, get our settler up there. And other than that, things are looking nice. Now in Rise and Fall, uh, you have to be a little careful, right? Because uh, new civilizations are going to be popping up as time goes on. So we don't have a calendar researched yet, so that's why we don't know the exact date. But uh, later on, of course, we're going to have um, Arabia appear down here in the Arabian Peninsula. And we're going to have the Ottomans appear up here in Asia Minor. So, and we're going to have, of course, the Persians appear here in southern Iran. So we have to be a little bit careful. As Babylon, your start position is not as uh, strong as it seems. Because, of course, uh, you, you're going to have a bunch of advanced civilizations pop up. So I suppose we could go for uh, writing, because I, I'd like to have writing as the Babylonians. All right, let's get our road ready, connect our query to Babylon. Oh, and we've got horses up there too. So I think perhaps this location, a little bit north of Atusha, capital, ancient capital of the Hittites, is probably going to be our best bet here for a city. And I don't believe uh, any of the civilizations that pop up will interfere with that. All right, so our settler is going to be done in seven turns. Oh, and Khatusha actually appears right here. That's interesting. And actually, they are barbarians, so they are at war with us. That's actually quite uh, fun. Let's get our warrior back here, and let's get our warrior up here to the horses, and perhaps we can actually fight them and defeat them if they are aggressive. It seems like they already lost a couple troops to those uh, independent forces. So if we fight, hmm, not great odds. Let's get our troops here in the forest. Perhaps I'll reinforce them before I go for an attack. You know, let's give it a shot. Oh, we actually defeated them. Very nice. Very nice indeed. And our other warrior, you know, let's... Um, promote our unit a bit and have him heal and then I'll uh, wait for the other warrior to attack. No, let's just wait there. Okay, so we've got our settler done. That's quite nice. And, you know, let's go for the pyramids. Because why not? Oh, so my settler is done, but I'm not sure where to create my city here. I suppose I could make my city in southern Mesopotamia, sort of a Sumerian city, or I can make it up here, up in the north. So you know what? Because if I make a city here, then... Maybe northern Iran is going to be best. This was always my downfall in civilization with city placement. Okay, you know what? Let's uh, 
Let's see. Perhaps I'll uh, make a city up north. Okay, our warrior's not quite ready. Okay, now he's ready. So let's attack. All right, that was a total victory. Let's attack the other warrior. We've been uh, quite lucky here. So we destroyed Atusha completely. Let's get our uh, settler, actually, north to where Hatusha used to be. All right, so we've got writing now. Very nice indeed. Let's go for mysticism. City raider. Actually, let's do city attack for these guys because uh, we're going to be attacking a lot of cities here. We've got to take these independent cities at some point. So let's get our warrior up there. We'll defend that city until I can get a better garrison unit. And let's send this warrior down here. Near Babylon. All right. So our other quarry is ready. That'll really help with the pyramids. Already 15 turns for the pyramids. That's pretty good. I think we'll get them before Egypt. All right. And let's create our city. Lagash. Budea of Lagash. Of course, Lagash not located in this location. And let's go for... Um, Let's go for a warrior and then perhaps library and a worker. And perhaps culturally we can overwhelm uh, Elam here, Susa. Yep, there was no need to attack them. Okay, and the Greeks are now, uh, it's now 1600 BC, so the Greeks are actually appearing on the stage. So, now we can take control of the Greeks. Okay, and it, as you can see, it works seamlessly, so now we have a couple of units of phalanx troops. And uh, we have Athens, and we have a little fleet with a sort of a colonist here. So we can actually create a city wherever we want. Let's go for Ionia here. And let's have our galley explore. No open borders. Okay, that's fine. And we can have our phalanx troops group together. And I'll send them against perhaps the Babylonian city that I know is up there in Asia Minor. And let's defend Athens. I'll probably send a warrior out here just to see where I can make another city. Okay, so we've got a couple of workers here. I'll send one uh, to make a mine. And I'll send the other one to make a cottage, or no, not a cottage, a uh, winery. Oh, I need monarchy before I can do that. So actually just build a road instead. All right, that's quite nice. So let's actually create our second city, Halicarnassus. So let's go for... Well, I need, a, I need someone to defend this city. So let's go for a warrior. And then actually, that is pretty much everything I wanted to show you about Rise and Fall of Civilization. As you can see, it's a, it's a pretty vanilla game in terms of the, the units and buildings available. 
But the gameplay is very different because you're placed in more historical situations. The gameplay progresses in a more historical manner. Now, uh, the weakest aspect of Rise and Fall is that, you know, because you know when, civil when and where exactly civilizations are going to pop up, uh, in that aspect, it's a little bit predictable. However, th there are so many sieves you can start as, and you can start as uh, even later sieves, right? Like uh, the Greeks or, um, I don't know, Japan. And then every time you start as a civilization that has a later start date, the world has developed in a different way. So it's going to be a different game pretty much every time. Uh, and that's something I really like about this mod for Civilization IV. I just like the idea of it. It's it's a very nice idea. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoy videos about the historical Total Wars, historical games in general, and mods, consider subscribing to the channel, consider liking this video, consider supporting me on uh, Patreon. And I will see you in the next one later.